Hi, welcome to this new question. This is question number two of weekly contest 234. And the name of the question is minimum number of operations to reinitialize a permutation. Now this uh, title is not self-explanatory. Uh, let's talk about the description of the question. But I don't want to take you through the document in this. I just want to talk about it uh, on this whiteboard. Okay. So uh, let's talk about this. So you would be given an integer. Let's suppose, for example, you are given n equal to 6. This is the only input that would be given to you. Uh, there would be no other input. Okay. Now what you are given is you are given a permutation set of the same size as n equal to 6, right? So as the value of n is given to you, the permutation array would be of the size n. And to begin with, it would be equal to, uh, perms of i would be equal to i. That means it would be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then what you have to do is you have to create another array, ARR, and then uh, you have to apply following operations on this ARR, right? So what you have to do is if I is even, then ARR I would be given a different value. And if I is odd, then it would be given a different value. Okay. So if array of I, uh, if I is even, then array of I would be equal to perms of or, or only perm. So perm of i by 2. And if it is odd, then it would be equal to perm of n by 2 plus i minus 1 divided by 2. Right? And this is when i is odd. So this is what you have to apply. Uh, now let's quickly uh, do the changes. So for i equal to 0, uh, array of i would be equal to perm of i by 2, that means 0 by 2, that means 0, right? So let me quickly do this part like this. So then array of 1 or uh, would be equal to perm of n by 2, n by 2, n is equal to 6, so n by 2 would be 3, 3 plus i minus 1 divided by 2. So that means 3 plus 0, i is equal to 1 over here. So this is equal to perm of 3 plus 0. Then ARR of 2 would be equal to perm of 4. So I'm quickly doing that. I think you can do the calculations. So this would be perm of 3 plus 1. That would be 4. I have done a small mistake over here. Array of 2 should be equal to perm of 1. This is 2 by 2. Then array of 3 would be equal to perm of 4. Array of 4 would be equal to perm of 2. So, and then array of uh, 5 would be equal to perm of 5. One thing that, that we have to notice, initially this would be translated uh, exactly like this. Right, zero would be translated to zero, and then fifth index, whatever is stored at fifth index, it will get translated to fifth index. Right, and uh, so array of one, uh, so whatever is stored at third index gets translated to uh, first index. Now, whatever is stored at the first index gets translated to second index. Okay, so this comes over here. Then whatever is stored at fourth index gets translated uh, to, uh, to third index. Now, whatever is stored at second index gets translated to uh, fourth index. So this is how it is. Now, obviously, uh, now uh, what the question is, the question is, this is one operation. Question is, this is one operation. Now you have to tell in how many operations this array ARR gets translated, gets formed to the initial uh, version of PRM, right? To the initial state of PRM. Okay, so let us try to solve this further ahead. Okay, so now after this, I'll again apply this operation to ARR, right? So obviously, uh, this 0 gets translated to 0 only, and 5 would get translated to 5 only, right? Uh, now, whatever is stored at 0th index gets stored at 0th index, whatever is stored at 5th index get, gets converted into 5th index. Okay, now over here we can see 
uh, one thing that we have to note, one thing that I uh, forgot to tell you about is that once uh, this translation has been done, once this operation has been done, uh, from the perm, I have uh, like uh, changed uh, the or updated the value of ARR. Then what I have to do is I have to basically update the value of ARR to perm. Now basically perm would be pointing to this, right? Now what we have to do is now we have to again apply this operation second time. We have to keep on applying this operation till this perm gets converted into its original state, right? So let us again apply this uh, over here. So when I again apply, zero would be translated like this, five would be translated as it is. Whatever is stored at uh, third index gets uh, goes to first index, right? Whatever is stored at third index goes to first index. Whatever is stored at first index goes to second index. So this goes to second index, right? So whatever is stored at first index goes to second index. Now whatever is stored at fourth index goes to third index. So this goes to third index. Whatever is stored at second index goes to the fourth index. So this comes over here. Still, this value of perm is not equal to the initial state. I'll apply the third operation. So in third operation as well, zero gets translated to zero, five gets translated to five. Now whatever is stored at third index goes to first index. Whatever is stored at first index uh, goes to the second index. Right, so four oak will come over here. Whatever is stored at the fourth index gets translated to third index. So over here, whatever is stored at second index gets translated to the fourth index. Right, so whatever is stored at second index goes to the fourth index as it has been written over here. Still, it is not equal to the original. So what we will do is we'll again apply a fourth operation. Right, so let's apply a fourth operation as well. Again, zero gets translated as it is, fifth, five gets translated as it is. Now, uh, whatever is stored at third index comes over here. Whatever is stored at the uh, first index comes over here. Whatever is stored at the fourth index comes over here. Whatever is stored at second index comes over here. Now, my perm has been converted to this initial state, right? So this is this was the question. I hope you have understood the question, right? Now we'll talk about some conclusions out of it and then we'll talk about the solution, right? So let's talk about conclusions now. One thing that you can note over here is that the first index and the last index gets translated, right? As it is, they get transferred as it is in each and every step. One more thing that we have to note over here is that everything gets translated together, right? The zeroth and the n minus one spot gets translated as it is. Other than that, we are left with one to n minus two spots. They either they either get to their original state together or they don't get together, right? So if one of these spots has not got to its right place, then none of the other spots would got to its original position. So they get to their original position together. So that is one important thing that we have to talk about. Okay, other than that, let's talk about the hints as well. So in the hints, what you can see is that uh, first thing is that we have to, uh, it's safe to assume that the number of operation isn't more than n. Right. And second important thing that is given to us is that number is too small. The value of n is too small. It's only 1000. So we can apply a brute force solution. Okay. So what brute force solution I'll apply? Uh, what I'll do is I'll keep on uh, implementing this, uh, so, uh, th these operations. So what I'll do is I'll take ARR, right? And I'll take PRM, PERM. And I'll keep on making these operations on ARR, right? And I'll stop at that point when each and every element stored at ARR becomes equal to PRM, PERM. So initially, I'll take the PRM equal to uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So this would be my ideal state. This would be my objective state. This is where I want to go or I. this is my achievement or where I want to uh, go, right? And initially, my ARR would also be exactly equal to this. 
So my ARR would also be equal to this. And I'll keep on applying operations on ARR till the point when I again get to this position, right? When both of my arrays become equal again, at that point of time, I'll stop and I'll return my number of operations, right? So it is as simple as it looks, but only the uh, complex part was uh, how they have given us the uh, description of this question. So that was a little complicated, but I hope you have understood this part. Other than that, I would be sharing you the uh, editorial as well. Uh, I would not be talking about the implementation this time because implementation has already been written over here. The implementation is done in Java over here. So uh, ideally what I'll do is I'll focus on the uh, question, right? And I'll focus on the approach and the solution. So I hope you have understood the approach and the solution. I would be sharing this editorial and with the help of this editorial, you would be able to uh, get the implementation and you would be able to understand each and every line of code. I hope you have understood this question. Thank you.